In a world with entirely too many shows about cars, this is another pointless automotive podcast. You know, is a better place to start? Is it really time? It's always really time in the garage, my friend. No, no. This, is, this is not the champagne, the champagne of beers. No, it's not from the champagne region of uh, the Rockies, I suppose. <laughs> um, is that true? Well, speak, well, they speak only French there. They do, Sean yes. Ponyo. Yeah, they, that's what they do. Um, <laughs> I wanted to hear that French. No, I can't. I'm uh, not. I, I don't uh, speak a, the French. I parle un peu français. Okay, see, look at this. Yeah, I took a lot. Worldwide over here. Yeah, you are, right. You are, Mr. You are a veritable Renaissance man. Mm-hmm. Been about the world. And that's kind of, sort of, loosely, what we're going to be we talking about today on another Pointless Automotive Podcast, which is... If you do want to traverse around the globe, if you want to globe trot Ooh. in your vehicle, you want to go on a, a rally, a run, a road trip, um, mm-hmm. you know, something something long and fun and adventurous. Um, I'm talking about cars here. Yeah, about. I was going to say. The, uh, there's, there's uh, let's say, rules of engagement. There's things that you should probably do Yes. Um, to do that. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Why? Why is that? Yeah, you know, why, why are you bringing up this topic today? Oh, because yeah, that's, that's what I've been doing this past weekend. And, and, not, to, <laughs> and not to jump right into um, hardcore drugs like PCP no. um, and Project Car Progress. Uh, that, that time will come, but um, that's what I've been doing because we are hot on the heels of going on the Coastal Range Rally 2022. That is um, a three-day driving event. Literally days away from today. Exactly. Literally. Yeah. So less than a week <laughs> from the the time of this recording, only a couple of days away from when you're gonna hear this right episode. And um, yes, so that's I've been rolling my sleeves up, and I've run into some hiccups. Um, I've had some successes. Yeah. And so I think it would be prudent that we talk not necessarily about those specific yeah the successes and, and failures, and we we will talk about that. But what should one do? Like, what what's the proper way? To prepare for such a thing, because we're yeah. going to be doing some um, uh, aggressive driving is probably not right, but I would say spirited driving. Spirited. For, I don't know. I don't know the, the layout. I don't know how many, but maybe a thousand miles over the course of three days. I don't know. It's a mystery. It is a mystery. <laughs> it is going to be mysterious, but it should be fun so long as we um, uh, keep it out of the ditches and we don't catastrophically break things. Um, so how how should we avoid such a thing? And this is in the galant. But this, I would say, apply to really, you know, we're going to talk in generalities here. Right. So doesn't matter if it's your ZR1 over here that I'm looking at, oh so pretty, oh, yes. or something a little bit, even more, a little bit more mundane, like the Forester XT or the behind Miata. us, or a Miata, or a whatever. But anything that's like not a 2022 Toyota Camry right. <laughs> probably is going to need, you know, if you're going to push a car for long periods of time far away from home, Yep. Um, it'll probably... If you're doing it right, it will require some care and feeding on the front end, so you have less of it on the back end. That's why we call it preventative maintenance, not mm-hmm. a <laughs> post. I mean, no, post I know you are the you're the patron saint of preventative maintenance. I am. Sure, Chadwick. I am. What what would what's your what's your go to? What's your job one, if you will? So this, like like Frank said, it doesn't just apply to a rally like we're about to go on. Right, we're about to embark on mm-hmm. uh, a road trip. You should do these same things uh, anytime you are going to be going out of your comfort zone more than your daily commute. I'd say. Yeah. These are great items to check off. Yeah. First one being, uh, of course, on the patron state of it, maintenance. Yeah. I think this is the most essential item. Uh, just real quick bullet items: ensuring all fluids are fresh. Uh, that's a big deal. All issues are addressed. You know what's wrong with your car. Don't lie to us. <laughs> we know what's wrong with our cars. Uh, yeah, all you have to do is slap the dash a couple of times and then all the instrumentation comes back and you're yeah. good to go. And it won't over, you know, the battery won't catch fire and smoke if you unplug it when you park it. That's I mean, true, yeah. Yeah, that's why you just, you don't never even tighten it so you can just pull it off by hand. Right, exactly. Mm-hmm. Really good for bumpy roads. Yep. Uh, all your maintenance is up to date, and this is not just your oil changes, this is making sure your timing belt water pump has been done, which is mm-hmm. probably the leading cause of a, a rally failure. If you lose your timing belt during a rally, you're not fixing it on the side of the road, especially with an interference engine. Uh, you, got like, that, you got that water pump starting to uh, starting to drip. Oh yeah, drip, drip, drip. Now it's not the time to uh, put a stop leak in it it. and cross your fingers. Right, exactly. Pack it full of mud. So these are these are big items that actually will bring you to a literal halt. Like if you have any of these issues, if you're low on coolant or you have a leak you haven't addressed, 
Overheating is probably, actually you're probably going to see overheating more than anything else. Uh, yeah, when you're driving extended periods. Thankfully, when we're going this weekend, it's supposed to be cold-ish. I saw it, it might be, at least by me, I haven't looked like where we're going to be driving, which we start in Carmel. I haven't looked down there for the weather, but at least by me, it was like a 60% chance of rain Friday, Saturday. Oh, it could get um, interesting. It could get interesting. Because the coast is a little cooler, obviously. Uh, it's probably nice. nice. Yeah. yeah this, ooh, we could have some... All-wheel drive is going to play a factor that's, in that. That's true. That's true. It's Wait, like, good tires. Wake up and drive. Good tires? Yeah. So make part of your maintenance is making sure your tires and brakes, guys, uh, mm -hmm. both get addressed. But that's that's my first bullet point is maintenance. I think, I think you can't even think about joining a rally or taking your turd box out if it doesn't have any of these items addressed. You're just yeah. Gonna, and just I think hate life. And that's something that like we... I, I, maybe we we can continue to be preachy about the tires, sure. man. Like, it's everything. I, it's so it's so easy to just like, oh yeah, that tread looks pretty good. It's like, you know, there's about fifty percent tread, and you're actually lying to yourself because you're not looking at the wear bars. You're <laughs> a millimeter off the wear bars. Like it's fine. A thousand miles, like a thousand miles is a thousand miles is a thousand miles. There's plenty of life left in it, and that turns into a fifteen years be damned. That's exactly. Yeah, they're made out of they're made fly. out of like rubber made material, and they won't grip yeah. for anything. And, you get them hot and there's going to grenade and then you're stuck on the side of the road. Right. And then you're like, oh, I forgot this has wheel locks on it. You don't have oh, the key oh, and you oh, can't oh. find it. And like, I thought it was in the glove box. Maybe it's in the center console. And then you, you know, you eventually just hammer a socket that's too big for it on it to get the wheel off. And then you're short a lug and then you go to your spare and your spare tire has no air in it. And it's even older than the tires on the rest of the car. And it's a slippery slope. Hey, that's and dangerous. if it's raining, or if it's freezing, or if it's 112 degrees out, that's not when you want to be discovering right. that stuff. Especially because, for us anyway, it's important that we take a fun car, something mm -hmm. interesting. We are yes. taking a 4G63 powered car, so all our DSM brothers and sisters out yes. there, you guys know how risky this is to push a DSM any mileage. Um, so I feel confident. I have, I have to because I did most of the work on this car, <laughs> so by default yes. I better have a little confidence yes. on this. You, you, do you have confidence in that I didn't completely mm. like re, re, re butcher some stuff? Because now that I've had it and touched it, had the radiator out and my radiator big, fans out and the, my the big exhaust off of it and, and, and all back together I'm and a, this and that I'm and a, a turbo worried. out. And, yeah. I'm a little worried. Uh, no, but that's very really superficial compared to like the time belt water pump. Sure. If we had no idea when the time belt water pump was done, I would be super. Con I'd be doing that like the night before. That's how serious it is on yeah. an interference engine like that. Yeah. You don't want to eat a 4G63 mid rally. No. No, you don't. <laughs> and I think <laughs> that's too. That. I, I do think, and let's be real, if this, if we were doing this rally in something that is, I don't want to say the 2022 Camry, but let's let's say a. 20, 2020 Mustang GT. Sure. A fun car, it's got a manual, all the things you want. Plenty of power. But doesn't have that quote unquote element of mechanical fault danger. <laughs> I, I, if I'm being honest, I feel like it would not, doing the rally would not be as fun. True. It, uh, There's no, to, no to court without your Yeah, where you're like once every 15 minutes, like. Uh, I'll like that noise. Listen, yeah, exactly. Like thinking, is that, is that a new clunk? Did you hear that? Or like staring at the, I know it's mostly on the middle of the temp gauge, but I feel like it's like one needle width above center. Should I be sure. concerned? And like, okay, now that before we go, we just had lunch, let's check all our fluids again and let's do all this stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, not having to worry about all that stuff. It's just like, what was that? What was that like meme from like, I don't know what online video, I want to say like Star Wars or something where like the sense of pride and accomplishment. Oh yes, like, yes you yes, get yes. we would get the sense of pride and accomplishment, but truly though, for like this is not a typically like pinnacle of reliability vehicle, a DSM. Unfortunately, not. Um, although it's technically well, working, this one's pretty damn sorted, right. I think. It's technically not a DSM because it is built. In correct, the you are right. correct. It's not the powertrain, drivetrain. Yes, mm -hmm. all those known faults still exist in the Glock, guys. Don't, yes. don't lie to yourselves. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, and and plus it's you know. It's a 30-something-year-old, 31-year-old car. Right. Um, well, in great shape, though. Mechanically very it sound is. as well. Mechanically very sound. Um, Original, know. which is key. I mean, with these kind of cars, like, and that's another note I made, is like, is your car modded? And how well is it modified? Correct. And who did the modification? Because of, like, at each... The suspension was done by somebody four owners ago, but the brakes were done by somebody two owners ago, but the... Um, 
who knows? Like the yeah. exhaust was put on by the original owner, and the, the motor was allegedly rebuilt by the third owner's cousin. And it's just like, Ugh. oh yeah. Um, so I do think that is, and I think that that's a, a piece I'll add because you, you know, definitely I think probably the most obvious takeaway is everything you just said: the maintenance, yes, making sure all that stuff is buttoned up, making sure, making sure that you're starting off from a nice, a, a, a solid mechanical foundation. Right. Absolutely. Um, Another part of that is know, know what you got. Like know the common <laughs> faults for whatever it is that you are driving and going to be driving aggressively and going to be packing hard miles on. Yeah. Um, so for instance, maybe, maybe you have a 2.5 RS Subaru. Know that your head gaskets has a 62% chance of blowing on your, on, your, on your adventure and know how to mitigate any issues should they arise and how to prevent them arising in the first place. Like right. you need to be like, I, I don't know, run holy water in, in the cooling system. I think you can, yeah. You probably should. Um, or you have like the go off where you're like, okay, there's going to be like maybe some capacity, like maybe you, the ECU is original and you haven't done the capacitors in it and that's a common fault on those. And so what is it? How will that manifest itself on your drive? And if it does, can you get back home? Um, you know, know who you're bringing to the dance. Yeah. Know your role and then potentially... And shut your mouth? Yes. Slow your role. Too. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> shut the fuck up. <laughs> was that... That's, that's Stone Cold Steve Austin, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really... Hell yeah, brother. Right. <laughs> exactly. When are you going to crush that beer can? I was going to grab yours and do both of them. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I just, you know, know, know the ins and outs and the person... The, the quirks and features, as some people said, um, of your particular car and what might go awry and how to handle it and what extra parts to bring, right? Like, are you bringing an 80s Toyota? Great, a very reliable choice. Some of them eat up igniters and you gotta bring a spare igniter with you because you're not gonna find one in the middle of nowhere mm -hmm. for an 84 whatever, 85 MR2 igniter. You're not gonna find in, in the middle of, you know, Barstow. <laughs> um, Maybe. You know, so bring and and I would say that too. You know, bring bring some stuff. What would you bring? I did have spare parts further down on my list, but uh, right after maintenance, tools. Oh, so that's is that why I'm coming along? Yeah. So uh, I am bringing the best tool I know for the job. Ah, uh, yes, yes, hand. Or the, I would say not the brightest, but the biggest. Hand. Yeah, the heaviest. Uh, so it's a, so duct tape and zip ties are a great start for this. I think that yes, you because you're, you're just you get you're you're looking for. You know, like, like literal band-aids, right? Yeah. You're mm -hmm. looking for band-aids to get out. J some JD Weld. Some J oh God. Uh, it's probably <laughs> oh, yeah. a hole in my block. Get a little edgy oh, at that point. Uh, but the, the things you want to bring for tools, screwdrivers go with, you know, you never know yes. when something needs tightening or you need to swap a part out. Common sockets for our cars. Obviously right. a metric 10, 12, 10, 12 14, 14, 17, yeah. maybe a 13, maybe a 19. 19 for love. 22 isn't, isn't a bad thing to bring. No, it might be the crank on that car. Um, <laughs> yeah, don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Uh oh, shoot, shoot, shoot. Don't shoot say, way, don't no. say. <laughs> Common sockets and a ratchet, pliers, uh, other common tools. Uh, the thing is too, when you have to repair something and then you do have a part that fails, you have to get that part on and off the car. If you didn't yep. bring a tool bag with you, you're just as screwed as you are without having that spare part. So, mm -hmm. uh, make sure fluids, fluid, fluids. Fluid. Yep, that's part of it too. Yeah, some uh, extra stuff like probably coolant is the number I'm one fluid, oil, oil 100%. Uh, windshield washer fluid, depending on what kind of environment you're driving in. If you're going on a, a yeah, crazy, if you're going to like dirt fish, like yeah. <laughs> road, like rally run. Um, yeah, power steering or brake fluid, depending on what year your vehicle is, is really important to have too. If you get a leak, brake fluid for sure. Although I, well, brake fluid's used as a like pinch. Power fluid. steering, you can dump damn near anything in the power Correct. steering floor. Just let it rip. Yep, put some you stop know? leak in there. Uh, stop leak isn't bad either. Some of those products are really good for this kind of situation where you don't have to carry. Or we're lucky; we're bringing a four-door sedan with a trunk. Yes. A lot of people, they were going to be in sports cars, which has uh, a seating capacity for two adults and then maybe some storage. If you have an MR2, yeah. you're screwed. So you really can't pack it full of spare transmissions right. and extra fluids. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, brought a spare head. You know, yeah. Like, oh, we didn't bring any brake fluid. Uh, but those fluids are going to come in. And like, even if, if you have a leak, just a limpet to where you can service the vehicle, it's huge. It's going to make a big difference, bring that extra fluid. But tools, you got to have the tools to swap the parts. You're useless without tools. Right. Uh, even with the spare parts. Yeah, even if it's just like the the Harbor Freight, like, you know, whatever, $49.99, like, 
201 piece toolkit. It's got like, right. like, sure, fine. Like do that, keep it, keep it in your trunk, secure it so it's not like sliding around, like smashing everything in oh, your God. compartment there. Um, and yeah, some coolant, some oil, so, you know, some of the basic stuff. Um, snacks. Oh, that's what you go. What you go. You got a. You got a go-to road road snack. Well, I put snacky. And, and, I, don't, and I don't mean like lot lizards. I mean like actual yeah, yeah. human flesh. Yeah. <laughs> I put I put snacky poos and drinky doos. Drinky doos. Yeah. So I I don't know things. Uh, obviously, like caffeine's a big thing. I want to get some caffeine in my system before, especially if right. you're really early or going to be driving extended de- periods. You want to be alert. So I put like if you, caffeinated beverages. If you smack, if you smash like. Three five-hour energies. Is that a fifteen-hour energy? Is that how that works? No, you will poop yourself. Oh, poop. you'll just like pop down. heart palpitations. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, I've done. I've had. you I had a bad experience. <laughs> but I call, what, I call it the hard farts. <laughs> oh no. But I mean, like, it, yeah, I, that not a bad idea. Um, maybe maybe you should just bring some poppers. Yeah. yeah. Coffee, coke. You know the yeah the coes. Exactly. <laughs> Coffee and cigarettes and <laughs> cocaine. Yeah. But to do what? Yeah. So, <laughs> it's a beef jerky. You know what's a good one too is, um, especially if you are tight, like if you were bringing like Miata tight. over here. Oh yeah, yeah. And Space you're tight on room. Yeah. And so you can't bring the kitchen sink as far as tools and parts and things like that, and you have concerns about specific stuff. Um, have a card in your wallet, mm. like AAA or any like you know. I know uh, Haggerty has their roadside stuff. Um, how it's such cheap insurance for owning some of these older cars. It's just like, oh, I can get a hundred mile tow or whatever. Um, you know, that is just do it. Like it's, yep. I, I, you know, I've had one for a long time and I, I don't, it's funny. I'm always just like, I don't want to waste one of my toes that I got three a year. So I end up limping something from here to there. And then like, I never end up using the toes over the course of the year. So sure. Like, Cause I'm always just like, worried that, what if I need three in a week? You have like range anxiety, like an electric car owner. Exactly. Your toes. <laughs> okay, all I have to do is, yeah, lift it 77 more miles and then I'm 98 miles oh, and I can boy. use the toe from it. Um, but that's the thing, if you don't have the tools and, and the fluids and stuff to be able to limp that part to yeah. that part. But yeah, I would say I'm a big proponent of having the. You gotta have basic tools. And the basic tools for me. And a, you know what a it is? Truck on pulse. So I have a, when I go to like pick and pull or something, I have my go to tools for stripping down my uh-huh. vehicle. Yep. Those are the same tools, same tools I go when I buy something shady and I have to drive like two hours home. Yep. You just have that same in my junkyard. Yeah. I have my junkyard bag. Yeah. And you know what you're going it's for. Some, it's got some stuff in there and invariably it probably is missing. I, before we go, I'll have to go back to work because I'm sure there's, I'm missing a, a 10 millimeters socket here and there because those disappear all day. Every pay, day. The, pay the gods of the junkyard. Mm hmm. Yep. You ever, you ever done that? You ever go, oh, you don't have, you like, like, where did my flathead go? Like, this is ridiculous. And you just like poke around a few cars and, there's and you, one, find, you yep. find one. Usually under the seat or uh, mm-hmm. jammed underneath. Success. And then you can resume your mission. You're not going to be able to do that on the side of, you know, Highway 99 in Baco, like hoping some, uh, you know, meth zombies don't come. We're not going to be doing that is what you're saying, right? <laughs> meth? No, we will not be doing that. Um, sadly. But yeah, so I think we'll be and good there. And yeah, I just wanted to add the thing about like, Roadside thing. It's like, huge. You know, it's, do the roadside thing. It's cheap insurance, you know. Um, or bring a tent because you're gonna be camping. Out. Bring yeah. Bring, go roof. Go full rooftop tent. <laughs> rooftop tent <laughs> row. <laughs> yeah. Open the sunroof. We can crawl in and out. Do they make those? Because they should. I don't like know a little, what that. Like, like a little portable. Have like a little seal. Oh, that you, you, you do. Yeah, that'd be fun. I don't want to. I, that sunroof, I believe. Have you works, cracked that right? yet? No, no, I dare not. Of course, I didn't crack it. What are you? <laughs> oh boy, I think we'll just let that one. I'm, I should probably just pull the few. I should find it's probably got an aftermarket fusible link stitched in there somewhere. Mm-hmm. I can probably doink that and just like have it be sealed for life. It probably works, works fine. It probably works perfectly fine. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, who who the hell makes it? Mm-hmm. It's at, it was as a dealer installed. Probably hopefully it's like Wabasto or somebody that's still around. But like, no, <laughs> ASC. I, I, I don't know. Oh, that'd be sweet. That'd be sweet. So in addition to having a card in your wallet, what else? Besides the sandy boots and, and drinky doos or whatever so that was. I put rescue recovery gear. Because uh, that's yes. something you don't think about too. Especially if you're so, off-road. Yes. So stuff to get you out of a bad situation. Uh, number one thing, jump box or booster cables. Uh, that's a freaking movie. Because in the, in the, not carrying a battery around, which I did put a spare parts, if you have space to carry a battery, absolutely carry a spare and battery. please cap that battery. Yeah. So you don't want the thing arcing around in your trunk. That's what holds my half inch breaker bar. I just set it right on top. It keeps it nice and straight. You ever you ever arc a battery with your forearm? Dude, many times. Okay, that's a fun thing. Warm thing. Yeah, definitely. 
<laughs> and it just fires out of your hand. You're like, I'm stupid. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go take a walk, a lap around the car. Um, but yeah, like, like, you're like, why is my arm tingling? And then you're like, arc, arced out with like. It's a, a wonderful like, feeling. Like, uh, yeah, the housing one ten volts aren't good either. I've done that a few times too. Mm-hmm. So it's. I, it's def- I definitely remember doing it several times as a kid. Oh, yeah. As like a young child. Can you put the like, key in the. Uh... <laughs> no, no, but just like absentmindedly like unplugging some. Oh, you got it. Suck can't, fly. Can't teach those skills. Um, was it a Spanish fly? Yeah. Okay. Um, but like unplugging or plugging in, I'm at a, a slot car track, which I had a, a neon green with white striped C4 Corvette. That's, That's pretty dope. Cool. And um, and yeah, just like absentmindedly like arcing my fingers over the the prongs as I'm like unplugging it or plugging it in as a child. And I'm like, hack! I'm like, oh, you're like everything is warm and numb. But like, it's like, it like Captain Phillips. You're like, I am the ground now. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm the, the path of least resistance. And so yeah, that, that was maybe that explains a lot. But um Yeah, so jump box booster cables, that can save you, that can get you to limp your car back to get a battery. Uh it, yeah, or an alternator, it can like a good jump sure. you a little distance if you need to go. I put uh, also in the same vein, portable air compressor. Uh yeah, tire tire if you got the room, especially especially if you're going off-road, Dude, tire plugs and they the, have the, the air thing. compressor. 12 volt battery compressors, yeah. throw one of those in there. Uh, tire plugs are massive. Mm-hmm. You catch a nail or something and you've got that kind of annoying leak the whole way, mm-hmm. just plug it. You can plug on the roadside as long as you have an air compressor, bring it back to full full pressure, you're good to go. Yeah, I, I've, got, I've, got a pl- I've got a plug in many places all up and down the state. So I got, we, I, we, we're, we're, we're good. All right. Yeah. Um, no, my tire plugs are awesome. I'm a huge advocate. I know uh, a lot of tire shops are like against them because the liability uh, has definitely gotten, you know, yeah, there's a especially if it's chain, if it's like, you know, back to being stranded in Barstow um, or Los Banos or Galt or wherever we're going to end up. Um, so if we get stranded in Taft, I'm sure like Joe Blow Taft tires that's been there since, you know, 1934, they don't care. They'll, 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 yeah, they'll whatever. They're like, hey, we've had this one sitting in the sun for seven years in the back. Want to throw that on? All right. Like, they don't care. But yeah, if you're in any place, chain shop, chain places, they don't, they don't want the liability. Plus they can sell you a used tire or something. They can sell a tire. Yeah, they, that's what they do. That's how they make their money. Do you think it's named after President Taft? The bathroom? Ooh, you know what? I bet you it is. Yeah, he's still, he's his, still ghost, his ghost is <laughs> still like all greased up and slippery like a hog and trying to squeal its way out of the Welcome out to, of the, the, welcome there's to the Taft and there's like a bathtub with blood water in it. Do we have? Is there a way that we can have a tap a, a tap episode? We just talked about. We are, we're halfway there. President Taft. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Taft talk. Uh-huh. Um. So yeah, I, th- yeah. The plug, the plug thing, the plug thing is good. Do you have? Yeah, I don't think I have. I think I don't think I have a tire plug kit. I've got tire plugs. Okay, bring yeah. it. Bring it. Bring it, bro. And I got a good portable air compressor too. Okay. I feel like I'm bringing the tools to this party. Th- that works. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 might as well. Yeah. Shoot, might as well. Um, and I'll bring the, uh, we just learned actually, sadly, a poor, poor, I pour them out except I don't have one. Sparks, alcoholic beverage, um, for local competitor, yeah. um, from the early 2000s, no longer in business. They, went, they, they went out in August of 21. How did, RIP, how did they linger so long? Four Loco got kicked out pretty quick. Oh, Four Loco's around. You can buy Four Loco. They did something. They took away the caffeine. All of them, yeah. So yeah. Sparks included, That's they all went, like, not caffeine. Yeah, it's no longer, like, um, you know, speed in a can. Yeah, upper downer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, so but we can get. Oh shit. So yeah, and that's the thing. Back to um, you know that's a that's a goal I'm gonna have on this trip is to not be appreciably hungover at any at any point. That's important. It is important, and I don't know if that's something you want to bring as a not hangover. Um, but I would say that's something to consider for it's your your road trip. Because, a very good consideration. Um, college aged me. I uh, was very not good at not getting hungover during and around like long road trips to like friends at college or whatever. True. No, we're driving back and like, Ugh. and just like absolutely, yeah, like dry heaving, wearing no shirt and just like no air conditioning in the middle of the summer. It's like, Ugh. When it ended all and the trip feels twice as long. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's, that's one of my goals for this trip is to not it's wreck out. Yes. Um, and uh, not break down appreciably. At some, something at some point will, in all likelihood, happen. Yeah. Yeah. We just gotta go full Boy Scout. Yeah. We roll the danger dice. We know what we are. We are. are we're gonna go. Maybe not full Icarus, but we're gonna fly close to this sun, my friend. And we oh, are gonna we full are, boost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, let's fly a boost. We'll, no, we're gonna just crank it. Yeah, I'm gonna say we'll, we'll just get the the valve with like the screw, like the old school, like '90s, like. 
Home Depot. We can find all the parts. A Hallman manual boost controller for like 40 bucks or less, but we're going to do it ourselves. Can it be a knockoff off of Amazon instead? It absolutely should be. <laughs> Perfect. Yes, <laughs> we will do that. Um, and uh, yeah, but I think I supporting think mods be damned. Support Supporting mods, yes. No. The only thing we need to support is our survival on the road so we don't turn it attacked. We, yeah, we said it though too, knowing your limits. So knowing the limitations of your car, uh, it's probably not the best idea to bring a car you just purchased uh, for an extended road trip. It can right. be, though Though the adventure rating will be high, because that's always a good time. Uh, yeah. But uh, you want to know your vehicle. You want to know, it, like you said, its features, its, its characteristics, its attributes. But also, you're probably going to push a little bit when you're driving spiritedly. Uh, yes. So, Knowing the handling dynamics of the car, like the braking zones, especially right. when you have cars in front of you that might be worth like I don't know twenty times <laughs> the value of the yeah, vehicle. Yeah, you don't want to be that guy that shows up and you're like, oh, clapped out like uh, eBay used coilover kit. Oh boy, um, and just like embarrass so yourself into the, the back of like a GT3 or something, something exactly. unbelievably horrible. Yeah, and you're like that was paint a sample. And you're like, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. You're I only all... had 20 payments left on my shitbox. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bought it from, you know, the buy here, pay here. Right. It's got like a little tracker in it that like lets them come repo it. They're going to call my boss. <laughs> my job is my credit. <laughs> <laughs> this, was my, not a, this was my boss's car. Yeah. I don't even know what I'm doing. Yeah, so Who just, are you people? Like honestly, exploring your car before you take it, I think. Put some, mm -hmm. put some well-treaded miles on too. Don't just drive it to yes. the grocery store once and call it good. That felt real solid going that mile and yeah. a half. Didn't even reach operating temp. Slap the hood. This thing's good. This thing's good to go. <laughs> this baby ain't going anywhere. Yeah. Um, yes, true. absolutely. Point, point, point taken. And that's something I'm, I'm, I'm scrambling to do this week in, in Gallant land. Yeah. Um, She's a peach though. It's going to be fun. This will be, this is going to be really fun. And I think it will be interesting oh. if, um, if it does, if there is rain, on the horizon and that's another thing i would i would encourage anyone to do is know what you're getting into weather wise ah, there you go because i personally am notorious i'm a notoriously like when it comes to like packing clothes for things i'm mm -hmm. like eh, i'll just throw this one jacket i'll just wear it and i won't even pack anything else and, go, and like i grossly under prepare this reminds um, me of the time we went to tahoe and you showed up in borat swimsuit exactly um, ironic because you thought it was going to be warm yeah exactly yeah and so it's, um, yeah, it, it, I always thought like if you, if you wore like a thong or like a G-string backwards, um, they would just call it splitting a D. I that's, a, that's hard to do. Yeah, you just gotta, you just gotta play right down the middle. But the, um, the preparation that you do, not just with the car, but like, and not just like, preparation what do you call H. Preparation H, yeah. <laughs> we should call it. I got a backdrop to the piles. I mean, yeah, the preparation H. And awesome. so you do. Is that Austin awesome um, Powers? That's a gold member, right? It's like, we'll call it preparation H. Correct. Yes, Moon Unit Zappa. So they had. Um, so yeah, bring bring your snacky poos and your drinky doos <laughs> and uh, whatever, and, and your, your sparky woos. Yes. Um, but yeah, like, bring clothes. Like, that's appropriate for the weather. Like, are you going to be going to the snow? Like, cool, prepare for that. Like, bring chains if you need to. Even if you don't use them, bring them. Mm -hmm. And. Um, yeah, just just prepare. I think what will be at a marked. I, as much as I want there to not be rain on our driving rally here, the coastal range rally, I think that would benefit the likes of us in an all-wheel drive, lower-powered car. Yes. Where like the fast group will be knocked back a little bit, hopefully, and True. nobody because they'll be afraid of putting the really expensive things like into foam poles, which they should. Yep. They should. Um, and and. We're gonna have brand new tires on the lot. We gotta check our wipers and uh, yes, put that some rain the washer fluid in and be mm -hmm. ready for it. Yes, yeah, or just run gin. You can just do that, I think, and mm. the washer fluid. You know, it won't freeze. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just some bottom shelf. Yeah, definitely bottom shelf. That is the good stuff. Or use the good stuff when we do yeah, extra exact two fire. goes into the cabin. Just spray sheet in the eyes. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, maybe if you, yeah, if you got pulled over, you just be like, oh no, officer, I. I smell like booze because look, tss, tss, and you just like dip the, him in the face. Oh. <laughs> yeah, then you're the one that's been drinking. Then you then you go to you go to jail. Go to jail. Um, anything else? Uh, what else are you thinking as far as like do not pass go do not collect two hundred dollars? I mean that's pretty that's pretty much the big stuff you're going to be looking for. Uh, expect the unexpected because you can't plan ahead mm -hmm. for everything. Uh, and then just bring I'd say bring a good attitude. 
Uh, if you're stressed yes. out the whole time, it's not going to be fun. Uh, it's not a race, so don't bring your "I'm going to win this" attitude right. because there is. That's how you. That's if you are driving spirited, but not like trying to win, trying to. I'm going to beat that guy. My car should be faster than that guy's. How come he's going faster than me? And being all like, no, nobody wants that person to be a participant in these events. Yeah, it's disrespectful. And you don't want to be that guy. Yeah, it's, it's disrespectful to whoever's hosting the event, the other participants, mm -hmm. uh, also like paying attention to the roadways, like staying in your lane, lane discipline's a big thing. Uh, yeah, you can push your car if you use both lanes, but that is such a bad move. And yeah, don't, the don't, spend, of car don't spend any appreciable time left of center. Don't pass people inappropriately, whether they're on your drive or not. Like, oh, there's this truck, I, I'm grumpy because I want to go faster and I've been stuck behind them for 96 seconds. So I'm going to, I'm going to full like rev limiter bounce past them, you know, yeah, in a turn lane. Like, don't, don't do that guy. Don't, don't be that guy. Don't do that thing or gal. And then like, just, I don't know, just have, drive with a, a, a modicum of like, like compassion yeah, for, yeah. Uh, for other human beings. Like a loving human being. Yeah. yeah. And it just, yeah that's a good one. It, it's bring a good attitude because ultimately it, the only reason this stuff is being done and the only reason folks like you or I or anyone else are doing any of this stuff is for fun. Might there be someone who's doing it to like show off their shiny thing and like try and have the biggest dick in the room? Sure, but don't yeah. don't be the biggest dick in the room. I mean, be the biggest dick, just don't show it to everyone. Yeah, was um uh, speaking of long dead presidents, uh, that was a uh, speak softly but carry a big stick. Oh, like, Theodore dude, Roosevelt that, had a huge. Oh, dude, that that boy swung a hammer. Like he would absolutely hit a mole. Oh, those nails yeah. were getting were getting swung on. That's what, he was the original Rough Rider. That's true, ride or die. And so um. The <laughs> it was historically sound, right? That's a good comment. I, it, is, it is. No, I'm trying, to, I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to add to it without going full casting couch again. Um, so yeah, just like just have fun and don't be a dick and and be be friendly and help people out. Like have yeah. a have a um, no no man or woman left behind attitude. Like uh, other people, are, if, if you're going with groups of other people. Um, like some people will have, there will be mechanical concerns. Hundred percent. You can help that out, or and if you can't, like, and you need to stay out of the way, do that too. Or offer to drive people places, or offer to like, oh, you guys need parts, like, let me go be that runner. Um, and we were joking a minute ago that if we're gonna be in the galop. We're gonna have a nice cushy back seat. Very nice. Should, back should seat. somebody need it? If, if well it, appointed, <laughs> it is exactly. Again, no more passive kind of couch talk. So it's um, you know, be in a position to help. And to be helped, and 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 it's not, it's absolutely not competitive. Absolutely. Um, the other part of that, though, Frank, is like yeah. uh, enjoy the drive, not just getting to wake the up and drive. Wake up and drive, Mitsubishi, yeah. 1992. Yeah. Um, but take it in. You know, we're gonna see some cool scene, scenery. We're gonna be in an awesome car. We're probably gonna be surrounded by equally awesome cars. So I'm gonna personally try to drink that in because you can get lost in the moment, right? Like, yeah. I, I used to race a lot. You don't. You're, you're so caught up in like the whole event and winning and putting down good lap times that you don't really focus on like, holy shit, I'm in a car, look at the scenery, uh, yeah. we're in an awesome car. Well, look at that you know, nice car that just And be sociable us. too. Like of talk, course. talk to people, like have a conversation, be lighthearted. Um, you know, ask people about their cars and why are they here and where are they from and, 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 and do all that. And that's why I think all part of it is, is yeah. taking it in. Even Seeing Porsche people. people. <laughs> like, yeah, try to incorporate them. You know, they need ask, they need ask them about show. their like their special color deviated stitching. <laughs> yeah. um, and their and that's their a Corvette too. Like it's a Corvette thing. My, it's like technically one of one with the stain on the uh, with, it, with the the factory <laughs> optioned chrome wheels because most of them actually came in Argent and I don't like Argent. Let me tell you about the history of Argent and then you just want to and I have these the the silver tire path. tire cap or the tire plugs versus the uh, exactly. You know what, I, it, it, can I take us off on a complete wild tangent for a moment? Yeah, of course, we're powerless to resist. Exactly, so <laughs> when, when I was um, thinking the other night about Sparks alcoholic energy drink, um, I got to thinking, because that was a moment in time, the early 2000s. That yeah. Because that was probably like, what, 2001, 2002, 2003? Yeah, right around there. Yeah. That, that all that was that alcoholic energy drink, drink craze where you had like juice with like J O O S E. Right. And you had um, four logo. Do you remember the Bud Extra? It was like, oh, it was like the awesome. Budweiser. Me and my buddies would go with B to the E because it was like the B logo with a crown and like 
to the power of E. That's right. So that's you, right. You get you got from the drinks of E to the E's. That so was down and drink like twelve of them, and then vodka and Red Bull got huge during that period. Uh-huh. So that was like a gig bombs. Yeah, gig bombs. But vodka, and, vodka and Red Bull was massive, right? And there were people having heart attacks and oh yeah, yeah. It was genuinely problematic, and it's still. Um, I heard somebody, where was I? I heard somebody talking about, like, oh yeah, let's just go out and do Jager bombs. I was like, whoa, like, I haven't considered that <laughs> but in your stream a long time. But I got to thinking of things from that era. And do you remember, I had to look up the name because I didn't remember what they were called. The B- BF Goodrich Scorcher TAs. Oh boy. Those were a set of tires that had a colored strip. That's it right. red. You remember and it left the skin, the smoke. It made the both, smoke. Both yeah. and, the, and the colored stripes in, in your, your skid marks uh, on the street, not your underpants. And you can get them, they had three different flavors. They had yellow, and they had red, and they had blue. Okay. And um, they had them for, I mean, I think they were like expensive, but um, I remember they kind of took them off the market after, I think pretty quickly, because there were all of these like, law enforcement groups that were like raising all this fuss because apparently like people were taking the red ones or the blue ones and then like putting them on and doing burnouts in like rival gang territory to like oh, mark their territory yeah. right Smart so you had like bloods and crips or derivatives going to like different areas and just like swang it and then just leaving there kind of as a calling card and then they were off the market but i feel like that's the if you can find somehow mm-hmm. find a set of those somewhere there has to be one someplace probably on an old camaro yeah, right away. Right away. But like, yeah. if you had like ones that you could put on your car, that has to be like the ultimate, sweet the idea. ultimate like early two thousands accessory. So, right. so in my day in the nineties in high school, yes. uh, our version of that was mm-hmm. take house paint, oh. slap it on your tires, go to the rival high school, mm-hmm. and drive around and leave marks. Oh, Except the police could easily trace it because you had paint all over your car from slapping off your tires. Correct. And so, a general when you leave, like a general direction of which, <laughs> which you left, <laughs> where the paint faded. Yes. Yeah. So um, definitely in preparation for your road rally, um, preparation in your, 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 exactly, you should source some uh, BFG Scorcher TAs. I love it. Um, uh, for, your, for your adventure. But yeah, bring a good attitude, bring parts. Um, bring maintenance. Smile. Get your maintenance done before maintenance the rally. Done. Tires, 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 Scorcher TAs or otherwise. Um, and I, I mean, that's kind of what we're trying to do. We're, the, 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 the wick is burning towards the end here as far as our preparation mm-hmm. uh, age for the, uh, the, the driving well off in coastal range rally this weekend. Preparation age and burning go together pretty well. That was, that was that well burned. executed. Yes, um, sc- and scorching, if you will. Uh, I, d- uh, let me share too much. I've never had, I've never had hemorrhoids. Never did either. Oh, high five. <laughs> um, <H3. laughs> um, no preparation needed. Yeah. So, um, I think that's what we're going to be, and we will find out because I, I by the, the episode after you can this. Check me for hemorrhoid history. Is no, no, exactly. Uh, <laughs> I check my dipstick. And the camera cuts. <laughs> but the, uh, yeah, we, we will find out whether, because, okay, so um, I guess we'll probably say, we'll, 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 we'll tease that for later. Not the hemorrhoids, but the, what I've, and we collectively, sort of have done in preparation for this upcoming rally because I do think that will be nice. really part of that Project Car Progress. Huge. Yeah. Bit. So how about I quiz you in the meantime, my friend? Ooh. Okay, let me, let me close my laptop and while you queue that up, um, if you are new, shame on you, just kidding, thanks for showing up, um, but that means you probably don't know what this quiz situation is all about. My friend Chadwick here is going to find a, a print ad from the 80s, 90s to early-ish 2000s, uh, and he's going to read the print copy from that, omitting uh, very important, extremely identifying details, and it's up to me to guess the make and model uh, of said uh, vehicle in this ad, and uh, I get three guesses, I get 10 minutes, and um, if, I, if I strike, if I get a strike, I can ask for a, a potentially not overly aggressive hint. Um, and that's kind of it. Chadwick, are you prepared? Because uh, I'm, I'm as prepared as I'm going to be. Oh, good. I'm ready to rock and roll. I'm put 10 minutes on the clock. Uh, no, no, okay. Heartbeat no, of America is done. Okay. Um, so I'll put the uh, timer on here for 10. I'll start it as soon as I stop reading the ad. Okay. Uh, so here we go. This one's going to be light on tech specs, unfortunately. Okay, so I'm going to need you to put your thinking cap on, but I think you can get this because there's some unique identifiers in the Ooh, actual okay. 
So without further ado, uh, ad is one single page. The top yeah. three quarters is the vehicle with some kind of uh, interesting artwork. Oh, a okay. question. Uh, so I'm going to wait to pose the question at the end. Uh, but here it is: two door or four door? On road, off road, front wheel or full time four wheel drive? Four wheel independent suspension, tons of cargo space hmm. and people space. Fully caffeinated engine, dual airbags, <laughs> sure, dual not? sunroofs. Sorry, two door only. Great colors. Hmm. In other words, the perfect companion in any landscape. See your nearest blank dealer for details. Oh, this is a tough one. The blank. It's out there. It's out there. Starting at 10 minutes. <sighs> okay. On my mark. Start, yeah. Stop thinking. Stop thinking. Oh, and nope, start nope. thinking. Hold on. <laughs> Tricks of Miller Lite. Miller Lite in lieu of thinking. Um, Boy, okay, so I, I I might have to ask for a little bit of a re re absolutely re read and clarification because it starts off by claiming kind of it's all things to all all men, right? It says two door and four door or or, or four door four door. But then later it says dual panoramic sunroof only on the two door. Sorry, okay, that's what I wanted for clarification because I didn't know if it was like trying to be cutesy at the beginning and then it's like ah just kidding we're actually only two door models but that's only for the dual panoramic sunroof on a two-door, mm. which you would think it would be more like on the four-door. Mm. Um, okay, front-wheel drive or available all-wheel drive. Um, caffeinated engine. Um, no specs as far as cylinder count or anything. So, boy. On-road or off-road? It's a big on road, off road, yeah. Um, <clears throat> and I don't know if that's just them doubling down on the available all wheel drive, or if they're trying to say that this is, you know, a, a lifted off road capable mm. situation, right? Like this could be on a cord because that was a two door and a four door, and you can get all wheel drive, but I think only on the cross tour. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's no. That's too late in the game. It could, well, I don't think on like a fourth-ish gen Camry you can get, because you can get a two-door, you can get a four-door, but you couldn't get all-wheel drive in that generation. Um, a caffeinated engine. Hmm. The way this is laid out, oh boy. This is a toughie. So, first and foremost, I kind of am just going to straight up eliminate Europia as an as a, 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 a area that would be making this vehicle. Because I can't think of any front-wheel drive European car that was sold in, in North America um, outside of like a Sterling or something stupid. Um, Two-door, four-door, you yeah, know, well, no, because that would be too late, too. I was thinking that could have been Mini Cooper, like the, 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 mm. the fresh refresh of the Mini Cooper, but we didn't get the four-door until, I think, out of the early 2000s. I don't think we got four-door slash all-wheel drive, all-road one later. And I'm doing a lot of talking, I'm going to run out of time if I keep up this pace. So, the Countryman is the, the four-door version. Correct. Or the Paceman, if you want the, the, the lifted two-door, which are, that's a sneaky car I'd like to take with one day. Yeah. Um, complete utter failure. Ah, uh, mm -hmm. boy. Will this have to be two-door, four-door? But it's all one model. Like, if I'm thinking, like, well, maybe it's like a Chevy, Chevy Beretta, um, but they didn't, the, the two door did well, caffeinated, you know what, I need to make a guess here before I completely run out of time and sink my own battleship. Um, I don't think you can, I don't think you can get a Beretta in all wheel drive. Um, I'm just going to say it to get the ball rolling here and I, I feel quite strongly that this is not the correct answer, but I'm going to just say Chevy, oh, no, I'm, 
gonna say, um, you have three guesses, my friend. I know. No, that wouldn't work either, because there was a not. I'm just gonna say Chevy Beretta. This is gonna this is gonna be a, let's call it a 1990 Chevy Beretta. The final answer. You are pretty far off, my friend. Okay. 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 So the Beretta was never offered with an all-wheel drive. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I thought. Um, what can I do to help you? Um, so my first instinct mm -hmm. is that this was made. That this was a, a an import from Asia, i.e., Japan or potentially South Korea. Mm -hmm. Is this an an, an, an imported from Asia into North America vehicle? Yes, this vehicle okay. is made in okay. Asia. So that brings me back to the initial hill I was barking up. You can do a boy two door four door front wheel drive all wheel four drive. Four wheel drive. drive. Four-wheel independent suspension, too. Four-wheel independent suspension. You could not get a two-door legacy. You could get a two-door Impreza, but boy, I don't think those came with a, a dual panoramic sunroof. Um, On-road, off-road. An off-road friendly two-door with available all-wheel drive. Because then even stuff like a Subaru XT would fit that, but they never made a... You know what? Could it be... The Subaru... RX Turbo, which is a very obscure car. Um... But they didn't say fully caffeinated. You would think they would have said turbo, because mm -hmm. that was an available turbo. Um, they did have a front wheel and all wheel drive version. They did have a two door version. I don't know about some of them. I don't think you can get a pan. I, that's the thing that's absolutely slaying me right now is a panoramic sunroof. Mm -hmm. The dual panoramic sunroof and that it's only available on the two door. Um, I'm going to say Subaru RX Subaru RX Turbo uh, Final answer, Bob. And it's circa 1988. You're a little too far back in the timeline and yeah. you have the wrong make and model. Sure, okay. Um, Because that is the rub, right? Is that the, the panoramic sunroof, generally speaking, is You're going to kick yourself when you find out what vehicle this is. I know I am. And this is, oh, is there's some nonsense calling me. 415, number verified, that's, that's lovely. Um, you have two and a half minutes left. I do, so I'd like to draw more attention to the off-road part of it and the way they wrote full-time four-wheel drive. Correct. Full-time four-wheel drive in a two-door though is what's really mm. absolutely killing me. Very interesting. Do you want me to get you there a little bit more? Um, give me a, one you actual really one know. minute. Okay, you have two, two minutes. It's... Boy, um, you could, okay, two all-wheel drive. It's not going to be a Subaru product. It's not going to be a Mazda product, I don't think. Um, from a Toyota standpoint, you have the Celica, they never made that in a four-door. From a Honda, you had a Civic, because you had like the all-wheel drive wagon-y, wagon or van deal. Um, they never, I can't think of anything two-door, four-door, other than a Mirage, but that never came from Mitsubishi. Um, Give me a, a, one more modest hint. I don't want you to give it away. If I get it wrong, I get it wrong, but... Stop thinking... This is a big one. Okay. I want to help you. Okay. Stop thinking of traditional cars. 
like a car shape. Okay, that's a huge help. And I've already said focus on off road. Off road. If it's four wheel independent, I mm. got I gotta believe this is body on frame or not body on frame. Um. Yeah, no leaf springs here, my friend. Um. You got thirty five seconds to throw up against. You know what? I would argue this is absolutely not a quote unquote caffeinated engine in this offering. Um, 20 seconds. I don't know if you can get a dual summer with it. In a two door, maybe. Because um, I'm right up against it. I'm going to have to say this is the OG, let's call it 1996 Toyota RAV4. The beginning of the ad. Let me pause you with four seconds left. Oh boy. This is Jeremy Wolf's RAV4 Dream. <laughs> oh. What will yours be? Frank, yeah, <laughs> my boy. friend. So the, yeah. remember the sunroof on these little cars, a lot of them were fully removable. You could have right. gotten to Honda CRV, Geo Tracker Land, which I thought you would lead off with. But those, uh, very, you know, I thought about it real quick, but I couldn't think, the, the two door part was killing me because the, my brain started down that road it's and it never made those two doors. So it's like, okay. You remember the original. We love the original. Those are so dope. I want to see the original cool. RAV4 with a manual. Two door, the all wheel drive. Um, I believe this had a rear diff locker. I don't know. Or a center diff locker. They did a center diff locker. But they definitely had a manual option, which mm -hmm. was super cool. Manual, all wheel drive. I'd love to 3SGTE swap one of those. They had a peppy little engine. I think they had a little 120 horse. I yeah, think. which is pretty cool. It was the the three SFB, so the non-performance dual overhead cam. Oh. Or dual overhead cam. Yeah, I'm um, surprised, man. It was, I, I know it didn't have the tech specs, but very few vehicles fit that two door or four door option. Off road, on road, and then the what got the so four slash wheel drive is yes. this four wheel drive. But it was talking about like on road, off road, and but then independent four wheel suspension. My mind, whatever for whatever reason, and the fact that had a, a, a panoramic sunroof, my brain immediately flipped over to cars, cars because like okay, like and and you got to think about like at this time you had like the Outback and you had some of the Subaru offerings, mm -hmm. which were you know basically just an all wheel drive. Cooper sedan, right? Um, and they would tout themselves as like off road, and it, no hope of doing anything off road. Clearance, yeah, and no clearance, and so I, my mind kind of threw that by the wayside, which got me in trouble too. Um, Was that a good helping hint at the end there? That don't think of a traditional car. Yeah, because it got me back to like okay, where because it Cross it put me down the road of like could it be like an Isuzu Rodeo or something. Mm -hmm. Um, or an Amigo, or, or anything like that. I just want to say you were paused at five seconds left on the clock when you submitted your final guess. Yes, yeah, that worked out. I, mean, that, I think that's the closest we've gotten to a buzzer, buzzer beater. The, 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 the buzz light your situation. Um, so I, I, that's a, that's a, I mean, I got myself there, that extra hint, which I guess wasn't too aggressive of a hint, but. No. Um, we like to get there versus not get there on the show. That's true, yeah, you don't want to have leave anyone in the lurch. Hey, real quick, prepping for a rally or road trip, I forgot two adult items. Oh boy, rubbers? Adult diapers and oh. adult magazines. Ooh, um, <laughs> yeah, <yikes. laughs> Just real quick. So let's do some PCP, <laughs> buddy. Yo, <laughs> boy, on that note. <laughs> yes, let's, let's do some PCP. Um, do you want to go with what you've been up to first and then we can close on- Yours is thematic, on... right, for the rally. Exactly. So, yeah. yeah, so mine has been, uh, my PCP of choice has been, mm -hmm. Forster XT, or the Forster XT right behind us, it's body work. So yeah, so uh, completely redoing the front bumper, which was in a big uh, dinger uh, a little while back and had some like spider web uh, cracking going through it. So stripping that down, uh, really good quality primer paint clear, like really yep. good 2K clear. Uh, came out pretty sweet. Looks looks pretty good. It's, it's got, got a good sheen to it. It's got a great sheen to her. Uh, this helps Michael, a lot. Michael, Charlie? Uh, let's go with uh, Martin. Martin Sheen. Yeah, yeah good call. Classy. More yeah, classy. I agree. More talent. Right. Who's the one that killed, killed, the, killed the chick? Was that a Sheen or a... They're all the same to me. Or an yeah. Does. yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Mighty Ducks. Uh, and then the trim paint, too. I had to paint mm -hmm. all the trim. Uh, and I came up with a cool hack. Ooh, hack away. That I thought away. Um, so in the back of this vehicle, there's Subaru written out with each letter being its own badge. Mm -hmm. Versus removing that and trying to piece it on like a child and having every letter crooked. Yep. Uh, I put, I took a paintbrush and 
dipped in Vaseline, a new oh. tub, not my happy tub. Right, exactly. And painted each letter individually, put the paint on clear. Oh, these You better do this clear. Yeah. <laughs> Was there a magazine page stuck to this thing? Is that a crab? <laughs> is, that, is that a nipple? Um, so just painted it on very delicately. Uh, and then after painting clear, I just wiped it away with a cloth, uh, cloth and Q-tips and was able to make it look, they look perfect. Um, Did you listen to Q-tip as you were doing so? Yeah, only but, yeah. Yeah, perfect. Only that, yep. Um, but that really helped that out. And this is like, I have to say body looks super time consuming and I'm definitely not a pro, but these sure. little touch ups, even painting trim, like pin, painting the windshield wiper arms that were crusty and old. Uh, add so much to the overall aesthetics mm -hmm. of the vehicle, right? Yep. So uh, it was very time consuming. It doesn't sound like a lot, but it was a lot of work. Uh, yeah, just kind of prep and clean up and then like, you know, Ooh. stuff that you, you don't anticipate like along the way. That you yeah, get, get a run or some dust or something you have to, yep. you have to redo. Yep. But I'm getting better at it, but it came out pretty good. Um, but that was my PCP. Yeah. Frank, you got some rally uh, related stuff? I think I PCP. do, yes. So, so keeping it on theme and on brand, Mm -hmm. uh, I actually did get off my ass and got some work done in the hey. long um, <laughs> surrounding uh, Thanksgiving uh, week and weekend. So on the Galant, which is indeed, if you haven't picked that up by now, what we are taking on the Coastal Range Rally 2020. 2020? And um, so... <laughs> 2022, right? That, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of whatever. We've it's, established from it's last also time. time I'm not it. I'm not, it's not boring. <laughs> so we did... Um, okay, so... The turbo, that was where we, where we last less left off. That's right. The saga was I had the, the, the ding duck turbocharger. Um, I looked it over, it looked like mostly cosmetic damage. There was a little, little ding in the oxygen sensor. Looked relatively okay. Um, so full scent, right? Mm -hmm. Got it all together, put it all back, got the bolted back up, got the radiator back in. I did hit a, sna a snag there. For the life of me, I could not figure out, and I still have not found it, the lower uh, radiator insulator. That's the little hockey puck galvanized rubber dude that sits in that lower tie bar. It's got an interesting shape to it, if I remember correctly. It's like yeah, a, it's a, little, it's like a, a pump disc. Yeah, it's got a It's similar, up. similar. Um, it doesn't have a leash on it though, so you know, tread lightly. The um, One of them was just missing, which is not uncommon. You pull the radiator straight up, some, usually it sits in there, sometimes it doesn't. And it's like, okay, it must have stuck on the radiator and fallen off in my garage. I turned my garage upside down and inside out, and I still have not found it. And I can't get the radiator in realistically without that. Like, no, because it'll just bounce around. It'll be rattling around, it's just not, it's not. But it's not doing right by To the be car. fair, I went back and watched my tape when I pulled the radiator. Yes. Both of them are attached to the radiator. Yeah, so. I went back with it. Yeah, <laughs> and when I pulled this out, there was one in the lower tie bar, and the other one wasn't there. I'm like, oh, okay. Look right, nothing. I still haven't found it. But you it. definitely drove it like that, so it, you would have heard. Sure. It. Yeah. I mean, I drove it the whatever it is, little, forty miles from your place to mine. Little then, things like that can hide in amazing places. I know. That's why I was like, joking. I was like, I'm going to find it in my son's room in six months. It's going to be in his closet. I'm like, oh yeah, I found it. It's cool. I've been playing with it. Great. So I called. I called around. Can't get one. They're unobtaining them. I called Mitsubishi. This was on a. What was this? This was on Monday. Or no, I called them on Friday. And then they're like, oh yeah, we'll order it in. Got it here, it's 12 bucks, pay over the phone. Not bad. Um, we have to get it out of LA, unless you want to drive to like somewhere I didn't want to drive to. Stop, uh, Stockton or something, mm. no. So, okay, cool, get it coming. It'll be here in two days. He's like, yeah, it'll be here Wednesday. Come by on Wednesday. And um, he's like, we'll call you, but sometimes we get busy. All our shipments are absolutely here by 11 o'clock. Just come on by anytime after 11, maybe you don't get a call. Okay, cool. So I drive over there like 1 o'clock on Wednesday, the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, he's like, yeah, let me go Let me go check on it. Did we call you? I'm like, no. He's like, oh, well, you should have waited until we called you. Like, you literally told me I didn't to just come on by. So long story short is I think they forgot to order it. Because oh. he comes back and he's like, well... It looks like they haven't shipped it. I don't know why, but they're shipping it today, and oh, it's going to be here on Tuesday because this is because of the holidays and blah blah blah. I'm like, whatever, that's fine. So I leave. Um, I look on row fifty-two, my favorite junkyard place. Oh, yeah, right? super fun. And what do I see in San Jose? Another Belize Green ninety-one block VR four in a junkyard. Unbelievably rare sight, which is unheard of. Yeah. So that that's rare junkyard finds. Is probably an episode in in and of itself. So I don't want to spend too much time. On that, but the I go down there. I drive down there on Black Friday. 
um, which apparently, unbeknownst to me, they were doing a 50% off sale. That's awesome. So I walked out with the two. I got an extra little radiator insulator. <laughs> I got the uppers because they were going to look better than the ones in the car. Um, I took a tr the deck lid with spoiler was there. It was trimmed but it was there. So, so I, I took that. I took some interior trim bits and pieces, and, and I spent like $128 <laughs> with, uh, I took a, a, a bypass valve, and a factory intercooler, and a charcoal canister, and a ship boot, and just a bunch of random stuff that are that you can't find for those cars. I mean, what's a deck lid on the open market? It's gonna be a few hundred bucks. Oh, I bet I, I bet if I put it up for three hundred fifty dollars, I'd probably sit on it for a year. But someone will, someone, someone will make one. Yeah. And honestly, if I'm just having it on the off chance that like a tree limb falls on mine, yeah, some if someone else needs one for their Galant VR4. The paint on this one's perfect. Um, I, I would sell. I gladly sell to them and have them keep their car on the road. That's cool. So I got what I need. I put the car back together, um, get the radiator back in it, fire it up. It fires right up. Ooh. Idles smooth. I let it do before I even like did anything. I let it just run heat cycle. I let it idle for like ten minutes. Oh, would heat cycle that thing a few. That's times. what I did. So I let it idle. You know, there's all the paint and assembly lube and all the nonsense and the burning off from the, the new turbocharger, both mm -hmm. out, out of the engine bay and out of the tailpipe. So I just, I literally, I just let it idle for like 15 minutes and I shut it down. Let it sit for another hour. I cleared my driveway because it's full of nonsense. Um, fired it right up, fired, fired perfectly up again, like right? Had, was holding, holding temp. I, I drove it, I took it on a, it was, it was just super dirty and dusty. So I took it to the local, Wash your own spray car wash. I just hose it down, give it a, a, a decent little bath, um, fire it right up. I drove it like 15 miles, boosts great. It smoked out the tailpipe for like three or four miles. And sure. then that subsided, just residual from the blown turbo from before. Um, no check engine lights, holding temp. It's not, you know, it, it, it's not using any coolant, like it's sufficiently burped. All is well. So I just went, I took it right to smog. Pass smog immediately. I love it. Smog test is done, so now I can finally complete the registration and do all that because I hadn't been able to. I started oh, that. Right. I haven't been able to do it because I hadn't been able to smog it because right. I'm yep. smoking like a chimney. Um, so that's all, all, all taken care of. So I drive home. I park it right in the middle of the driveway. Everything's great. It went swimmingly um, until until then. I go okay. Let me let me move it out of the driveway because I had to put all the other cars. My drive is like a driveway's a long tandem like inline driver. So I gotta, I gotta stack stuff up strategically, right? Mm -hmm. so I, gotta, I moved the 924 turbo. I had the sandbar at the house right now, so I moved that out of the way. Well, now we gotta put it all back in. So I go to start the Galant. Fires right up for about two seconds, maybe one full second, then whoop, full cut power. Huh? All right, weird. Crank. No, just crank, 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 crank. Nothing. I'm like, ah, oh, now what? Mm -hmm. Long story short is it seems like the there was a blown fuse for the MPI, which is a multi-point injection for the fuel system that powers the ECU. I pull, I, I check the. It, sure enough, I'm not getting any spark, which is why I was acting the way I was. I go buy a 20 amp fuse, um, plug it in. But before I do that, like, okay, why did it blow a fuse? It right. just doesn't randomly blow never, a fuse. Never go. Yeah. Right, it's got to be a reason. So I'm poking around, and yeah. long story short, I deduce that. One of the thing, one of the main things on that circuit, is the upstream oxygen sensor, um, which also has the, the heated the heating element in it. And so it was cold from sitting for several hours in my driveway. So I was going to try and do a cold start, and I'm sure that's what happened. It kicked on that heating element, that dinged up O2 sensor, that oxygen sensor, mm -hmm. um, which I'd already bought the replacement. Smart. I just didn't put it in because I was like, yeah, it actually looks good. It looks like an OEM sensor. If I can keep mm -hmm. the OEM part, I'll just run it. Um, and it's not disastrously difficult in theory to swap out um, with the turbo in the car. Sure. It's pretty accessible. So, okay, cool. So that's what's going on now. So I go to pull that O2 sensor. I found some chewed up wiring on the harness side where the, the sensor plugs in. Clean that up. It wasn't that bad. It was just some of the shielding was, was snarkled up. Um, so it's got to be a short inside this oxygen sensor that went for a wild Mr. Toad's wild ride with that turbo in the dinged up box. True. So I go to swap it out, and that thing is just like gorilla torque in there. I, I can't imagine. Of course it is. There's no assembly lube or something. I don't know. Um, but it's it, it ain't coming out, and I've got my my probably X Harbor Freight 
O2 sensor um, socket. Painted, the material soft, it, okay. it, it, round, it rounded, rounded off the off, yeah. sensor. So it's Monday now. We have to be driving this thing on Friday, and I want to get some more shakedown mileage between here and there. So I've just left it this morning with a pseudo reputable shop yeah. to be like, hey, this is the deal. I just need you to swap this thing up for me real quick. Can you do it today? I'm like, yeah, that's fine. They're going to probably charge me 100 bucks at the most to do it. Whatever. And then it's done. And then I can drive it. But it does run well. It's making boost. I also got new tires. Nice. So what I did was I unplugged. I had an, an appointment to have tires done at a local tire shop. Um, but with the O2 sensor thing, it hung me up. So I just unplugged the O2 sensor and just drove it there. Yeah, the, the upstream. Yeah. Even through a check engine light. So whatever. Um, drove it there. It's got new Redstone Sprint Plus tires on it, which are nice. 300 tread wear. Yeah. Some good grip. Um, good. You know, summer touring. Which, so even if it, there's some rain. Um, will be in good shape. Nice. Um, I'm hoping by the end of the day, the day today, we will be full, full on sorted, ready to rock. Can't wait for the thing. So I'm going to spend some day, some time on Wednesday. I want to get hundred, at least a hundred miles on it. Yeah, at least, absolutely. At least. So, um, and I've got 20 on it since the turbo's been in. So that's the prep for the rally. Solid dose of pieces. I don't know if we're going to have rally. Should we should we record an episode on the round? We could try. I, I think, think we, we should, should attempt it. it. Yeah. I think that would be cool. Whether the you know what the pro move is? Put a GoPro in the windshield as we're driving a leg of it for like an hour. Oh boy. Just talk talk rally and talk our experiences. Maybe on day two or something, once we've got some some yeah, like time chill we can talk about like yeah, where we're we not talking doing, about what we're doing, what we've done, where we're who's not following doing, us. Not during a technical us. section, right? During oh no, we can be technical. I don't know. We'll just <laughs> ah, God, you know so. <laughs> um, we'll just yeah, as long as we don't die it'll all it'll all be it'll all be good. It'll be a yeah, famous be episode. episode. So um thanks to all the homies, yeah, guys. Thanks the homies. Mess. Is that a thing? I don't know. Yeah, sure. Um, for uh, for watching and listening and doing all the things. If you want to hear us talk about other stuff that we have yet to talk about, you have ideas. We are all ears. So let us know. Yeah, um, comment rudely or otherwise. Um, where can you be found, sir? Yeah. If they want to see what your exploits are. Auto Obsessive Garage. You can find me on YouTube, mostly doing uh, car rescue restorations, review from time to time, and then same with Instagram. How about you, Frank? Where can the good people follow you? Uh, same places, except at the photographer's garage for my car photography exploits. Um, and uh, we are uh, at APA Podcast on a nearly abandoned uh, Instagram uh, page. And uh, some good stuff every once in a while. Every now and then, there's some gems. So uh, follow Thanks. along there. Yeah. Thanks as always, guys. Take care. Bye bye.